Welcome back again uh, to another episode of Big Red's Isopod. This week we're going to be talking to you guys about culture crashes. Uh, I just wanted to show off my new tank, that's all. Alright, let's take a look. So guys, I just want to start by saying there's many ways uh, cultures can crash. Uh, it can be due to poor nutrition value. It can be due to... Um, possible parasites or diseases getting into containers that cause your isopods to crash. Uh, it could be from multiple things. Another species getting in there that's taking over the other container. Uh, but one of the most popular ways that isopods crash is by having way too many isopods in one container. Now, this container isn't crashing yet, but I suspect that it will be crashing in the new, near future. Not due to the fact that just there's too many in here, but the fact that uh, it's been a long time since I split here, uh, this group here, and um, they're known for crashing uh, due to the fact that they breed so prolifically. And one of the first signs, the very first signs that you can tell that your culture, your culture is getting close to crashing is right here. Now if we take a look at this here, it looks like dirt, but if I look up at it real close, this is actually all frass. You can take a look down in here, you see how the soil is looking almost square? That's all poop, or what they call frass. Now that's all isopod dung or poop there, excrement, whatever you want to call it. Um, but as you can see, if I take a look pretty well anywhere on the ground, it's just frass. On the log, or the bark here, it's frass, 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 frass. So that's how I know that this culture here and its twin culture over here are going to um, probably crash. And as you can see, just like in the other culture, just frass, all over frass, 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 frass. So, um, not known to a lot of people, isopods create methane. So, when there's too many in one container, um, they build up a lot of methane, which can obviously kill them, and also cause issues with them. Uh, breeding, your breeding will slow down, your, uh, your likelihood of age increase will deplete. So in other words, they're not going to get old. They're, what's going to happen is they'll be, when they're young and they're fit, they're going to thrive, but as soon as they get to a higher age, they're basically going to die early. And I've seen that happen quite a few times, I've had some issues with that. Uh, but I think the best way to solve it is to just split the culture. So that's probably what I'm going to be doing next weekend, uh, or next week, I should say. Probably during the week I'm going to split these guys and I'll show you that in next week's video. We've seen it before, but I figure uh, it can't hurt to show again. But yeah. I just wanted to let you guys know that to watch for this. So this is one of the main things you're going to want to watch for whenever keeping isopods is if you ever see a buildup of frass like this, you know that there's too many in here, that you have just way too many babies, way too many adults, and your culture is going to get close to crashing. And like I said, these have not crashed yet. Uh, they might be getting close, I'm not too sure, but uh, what I'd like to do is just explain to everybody the different ways that a culture could crash and ways to prevent it. So for this one is obviously an easy fix and the most common one is to make sure that we're going to change out or split the cultures in half or change the soil. You could add new soil if you weren't ready to split them yet, but in my opinion, the best way is just to split them. Now, if you or keeping isopods as a hobby and you don't feel like having more containers for selling purposes or whatever then I would just I don't know uh, depends on where you live you could release them into the wild as long as they're native species and they native to where you live 
or possibly sell them to a wholesale place to get some, well, a little bit of profit off of it. But not only that, to let somebody else enjoy the isopods for a little bit. Or you could possibly feed them to one of your animals if you have anything that could eat them. Uh, I wouldn't suggest eating them yourself because that's not ideal, I would say. Maybe maybe there is some nutritional value to these guys, but I, I think of them more as pets than I, I would think of them as food. So I'm not going to eat these guys, nor do I think you guys ever should. But... Yeah, uh, there's another way um, uh, that they can perish, and it is from lack of vitamins or nutrients. So I added cuddle bones to mine to keep the calcium up because I found that they were not doing so well a couple months back. They just seemed to not have enough of something, and definitely the the cuddle bones helped. I was giving them calcium powder, but that. It tends to disappear in the dirt relatively quick, I find, unless you put it on a hard surface of some sort, like bark, or in a leaf, if you got a leaf that's kind of bowl shaped. Um, but as you can see, that one's completely gone, but this one here is about halfway gone, and it seems as if all the isopods in here have got their calcium intake back up to where it needs to be. You'll have to excuse this, I just fed them today, but uh, they'll have that eaten up by next week, for sure. Uh, with how many there are in here, there's definitely no chance that any leftovers are going to be left. Considering all the fish food I gave them today is pretty well gone, they're quite the voracious species, uh, Labus are. Especially the dairy cows. When they get into high numbers like this, they'll just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat, eat. Again guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I know uh, there's quite a few people that watch these videos, so don't forget to subscribe, it really helps out. So right here I have a culture, my culture of Purcellia valencia, uh, a Spanish uh, species isopod. Uh, I, it was one of my first Spanish species, and what I didn't realize actually, I kind of knew about it, but I didn't really take into quite the seriousness of it. As you can see here, I have multiple layers of bark. Now what was happening is I was coming in here every week to find more dead isopods and everywhere I looked I didn't see to be something seemed to be something that was wrong. I made sure that the moss was kept wet, I made sure that they had calcium, they had leaves, I fed them, the food was always being gone, there wasn't any mold outbreaks that could possibly harm them, and yet every week I was finding more and more dead bodies. And I was just wondering why I was finding these dead bodies. So it's just a little baby right there. You can see them. Um, and I think that was because they were fighting each other. Now, Spanish species are known for fighting each other when they have not enough space to move around or care for their young. So I really do believe that's the reason why I was finding so many dead isopods was that they were just getting frustrated with each other from lack of space and they were going at each other. And it wasn't like they were eating each other, it was just like they were left there dead. And like they looked completely healthy, they didn't look like there was anything wrong with them, they were just perished. And this week when I took a look, it's been a couple weeks since um, I put in these extra bark bits. And there is quite a few in here, but I didn't think that there was so many that they would start fighting each other. It never even crossed my mind. But unfortunately, that was the case in this uh, in this example here, uh, or culture here, is that they were, in my mind, I do believe that they were fighting each other for territory. So what I did is I put an extra amount of leaves in there, kind of laced it in through the bark and underneath, so that way there was more space for them to hide. I actually did the same thing with my Magnificus culture, my Bolivari culture, um, my Expansus culture, and also my uh, Hasi culture, my high yellows. Just because I found out from this culture here that uh, Spanish species will kill each other if they have not enough space for them to feel comfortable. So I just wanted to make sure that anybody out there who is watching this video knows that that will happen. 
I mean, everybody thinks, oh, I, I really would like to keep those Spanish species and, and they're not too difficult of a species to carry, take care of. Like the, the Hossies aren't too bad, the Valencias aren't too bad. Well, I'll give it a shot. And that's exactly what I thought. And unfortunately, I ran into the situation where they were killing each other. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore. I have not seen any new dead bodies, so they probably feel a little bit more safe. So, what I'm thinking is when these guys are um, get up there in numbers is I'm gonna have to split the culture, not because of too much frass in the dirt. Like this, this is what I'm trying to say. There's not gonna be too much frass because as you can see, that's perfectly fine soil. There's doesn't look like there's any frass anywhere. Anywhere I look, I don't, you, there's a little bit of frass down in there, but you don't see an abundance of frass like you do with the other species. But they're not fighting each other. The Lavis are not fighting each other. They don't kill each other for space. But unfortunately, these Spanish species seem to. Now, I could be wrong. There could have been something going on that maybe it just happens that it's not a problem anymore. Maybe it was something I fixed and I didn't even think about it, but in my mind, that's exactly what was happening, is that there were just too much of them in here, too many males, uh, and they were fighting the females, fighting over the females, I should say, and they were killing off other males, and they were killing off the females because they were trying to mate with them too strongly, I would think, and I think that's what happened here. I also want to talk to you guys about culture crashing, including these two isopods here. The dwarf whites and the Florida fast. Now, when it comes to dwarf whites, they will outcompete any other culture that you have. Yeah, I keep these guys on my bottom shelf in the corner, no clo not close to any other cultures. And the reason why is if one of these gets into your culture, they will non-stop breed because they are born able to breed and I do believe they can just lay eggs without mating uh, and they will outcompete almost any other culture. Now the only culture I've had that can outcompete them is the Florida Fast. Now the Florida Fast I don't think will outcompete your other cultures by themselves. Uh, maybe over a long period of time they could outcompete them. These dwarf whites will outcompete your pretty much any other species and they will die off 100% of the time. I've had it happen to a uh, species on my Cubaris, a Cubaris um, uh, Platinums, which they might not be Cubaris Platinums anymore, I'll have to look into that, but uh, when I bought them they were labeled as the, genie, the, the genus Cubaris, um, and I think they're Amadalidium now, but either way, the Dwarf Whites completely eradicated them. Uh, and then I thought they were going to have the same effect with these Florida Fast that I have in here, but as you can see. There are no more dwarf whites in here, but there is a bunch of Florida Fast. And I do believe if some of the Florida Fast were to get into this container or any other container, over time they would outcompete them as well. So that's why you always want to make sure that when you have isopods, that you are not mixing them into different cultures. You want one species per container or per culture, and that's the way you want to keep it. And last but not least, the last thing I want to tell you guys about, about culture crashes that can potentially happen is just having natural die out. Uh, sometimes when we get cultures, there's not always um, healthy, healthy isopods in there. Maybe they weren't taken care of uh, properly. Maybe they were hurt on their travel to where you are, to, um, to your door or from an expo if you pick them up and unfortunately sometimes they die off and you just can't keep them going. Um, I'm having the same problem here uh, with this container right here. This is my um, Kibaris Red Tigers. I am down to two adults in there. There is Monkai in there, there is babies and I was really hopeful but they're down to two parents and I'm afraid that they're gonna die off. They might not, but I'm gonna not hold my breath on that one. Uh, I'll just pray that they come out all right. But um, who knows? Uh, maybe it'll be okay, maybe it won't. But that's all. Thanks for watching this week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. And we'll see you again next week for the culture swaps. All right, bye.